inspired form and revolutionary function come together in the Mercedes Gullwing SL at number six. It's such a work of art, it really is, you know, it, it's stunning. It, it's better than any Picasso. The lines of the Gullwing are pretty much perfect. The thing the car has, it's wonderfully taut shape and yet has rather voluptuous curves, but they're not the voluptuous curves that, um, like the Chevy Corvette, which are a bit over the top and brazen and showy. These are curves kept in check and you know that the car's been designed to be super aerodynamic and yet it's hugely glamorous at the same time. To arrive in the car and then the doors go up on little gas struts was really quite special. You want to make a stir, in those days you arrive in a Gullwing, you've made it. Certainly the Gullwing is a milestone car, aesthetically, technologically. I mean, it stunned the world when it came out. Everybody just went, holy mackerel, look at the technology they've put in that thing. Its tubular space frame made the Gullwing extra rigid, crucial for control at high speeds. And at only 82 kilograms, the frame was as light as a feather. But those same tubes took up room where the bottom of the doors would go. So instead, they would hinge on the roof and lift up, as opposed to out. It was a practical piece of design, but wound up becoming the car's exotic signature. I mean, those doors were just unbelievable. It literally looked like a bird with the window, with the, the doors open. And when you pull them down, you're in this cocoon. No issue. Getting out is more difficult because you actually got to get your bottom on the ledge back up from the seat and swing out. But um, you see, Mercedes Germans are so clever. I just think of all these things because what happens if the woman is driving wearing a skirt? There's a, there's a bar under the steering wheel and you pull it out. And the steering wheel goes up like that. So now you can raise yourself, flip your legs over. You see, the Germans think of everything. Damn them. Yet another innovation. This was the first production car in the world to use fuel injection. It was one of the most important high-tech advancements in the history of sports cars, and yet the concept of fuel injection is deceptively simple. With a carburetor, you've got pressure from the fuel tank via a pump, but it's low pressure. And when you put your foot on the accelerator, the fuel falls into the manifold like that, mixes with the air, explosive mix, and the car accelerates. With fuel injection, it's different because the fuel is actually propelled at high pressure into each cylinder, mixed with the air, and it's the exact amount of fuel. So it's efficient, it is the most combustible fuel-air mix, so that you get the biggest explosion and therefore the greatest amount of acceleration and no wastage. While renowned the world over for its glamorous looks and technical achievements, it wasn't always the easiest car to drive. Driving it, it's a truck. You know, it's a big, heavy thing. The brakes, you got to push your, you know, the pedal through the floor to get it to stop. And the uh, exhaust ran right underneath the car, so the floorboard get, gets really, really hot. It'll melt your tennis shoes. And it had its big swing axle in the back, so when you really got hauling butt, you could get it squirrely very easily. So it was sort of like riding the bull. It was unpredictable on the corner, and the suspension wasn't actually very good, which is a pity, because the rest of it was brilliant. It's not the nicest engine note. It's not the nicest looking. It's not the nicest interior. But as an overall package, it is one of the greatest.